Hey guys, I'm Christy. I'm a stylist and a brand ambassador with Dreamcatcher's Hair Extensions. And who I have with me today is my model, Ash Marie. Okay guys, today the look is mermaid hair. So in order to achieve this, I'm going to be custom coloring 24 inch eye tip extensions to match the color that we've already done with Pravana Vivids. Once we put them in, I'm gonna blend her, give her that look that she so desires, and we're gonna be all mermaid out. Can't wait to show you guys. Hey guys, we're back and now we're gonna talk about custom coloring these mermaid extensions. My client gave me a color palette to use. So what I'm doing to achieve that is actually I'm pre-mixing different Pravana colors, the Vivids, uh, to make these colors that she wants. To the left, there's gonna be a green. To the right, it's also another custom color. Can't really see it, but it is there. And we also have our third color because what we're going for is an ombre. Two different colors, one that's green, one that, one that is pink. Now to do these extensions, I'm working with two different colored extensions. All are 24 inches, all are wavy. And we've got the levels 11 and an ombre as well. Right now I'm gonna start working on the level 11s. I usually only take a couple at a time. Uh, the point is to really get this color saturated. Really wanting to saturate into this hair. We wanna make sure that these extensions do not have any color blonde missing, you wanna make sure they're completely saturated. So I'm going in and really moving that color in, making sure the more I spread them out, the more color I can get in. What I like about doing these custom colors though is that I really get a chance to um, get my creativity out. They give me a palette to work with and then I have the ability and free reign to just create and I really like it. It's kind of fun, plus, no color is uh, left out. You can always do any color you want. So I'm going down to a certain point because it is an ombre and her hair is a little bit past her shoulder length. So I wanna make sure I at least get some of this in here to about the same length. I take my second color, which is actually really pretty. It's probably about two, different, two or three different colors. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on, I'm gonna melt the first color down into my second color. Again, like I was doing in the front, just make, at the top, making sure I really saturate this hair in there, kind of squish it in, melt the color in. Do you want it to be really smooth, seamless color? I do this on foil also, because I feel like it's with the light like this, I'm able to see the reflection up, seeing the color, making sure it's a good solid color. A little bit easier to work with as well. So as I me mesh this color in, <laughs> just kind of blend it, melt it. And you can kind of see how it's already turning into an ombre. Make sure too to keep your hands clean. It gets messy. If it gets messy, you get spots. And if you get spots, it's not very consistent color. So you want to make sure you really keep your hands and works place really clean. Keep your colors separate. Also, if you run out of color, best thing you can do is pre-measure it. Write it down. When you write it down, you know what you need. You need more color, you can create the exact same color every time. I have found that that makes my coloring process much easier. So I'm doing the third color, melting it in as well. So once we've got this, we've got our first section done and we're gonna pull out this couple more extensions. Repeat the process all over again. It's a little monotonous, but it's like painting. I also am keeping the extensions around the same length of color. I want them to be all the same. A couple I will add just one solid color, but for the most part, I want to keep them ombre at the same color, same, same everything. Again, making sure to really saturate that hair. And I put the hair on top of it as well because it allows color to hit the bottom of that hair so you can kind of use your color without wasting it. I have found that just holding it with my hand is the best way to keep the hair from scrunching too much. And I always paint down. I like to keep that shaft, the hair shaft, especially with blondes, to 
go completely down. Keeps the hair a little bit more shiny. Then again, using your second color. If you get any color on there, just keep it clean. Brush size also doesn't really matter. It's really all about your comfort level for brushes. And don't be afraid to get your hands in that hair. You really, it's like I can't stress too much, but getting the color in there really good, it's, it's gonna keep the color solid. I'll show you the ombre ones I'm doing as well. Because I had pre-lightened her hair at first, we've got some of her natural and then some of the ends are a little bit lighter. So I wanted to use an ombre also to give a little bit of depth in the color, not keeping them all blonde, but adding just a little bit of darkness towards the top and even lighter color towards the bottom. Same procedure though as far as coloring goes. But this, we can get that extra depth from the level nine that's the top of the ombre extensions. And once I'm done with these, I'll move on and we'll do the pink. Okay, now we're gonna start with the purple pink ombre. Like I did with the greens, I custom made colors with these as well. This is gonna be close to the root color. Then we've got our mid shaft color and then our lightest just on the tips. So again, same color procedure, starting from the roots, just a couple at a time. You really wanna saturate that color into these extensions. Don't want any blonde poking through. Again, very similar to how I did the greens. Once this is processed, it's gonna be rinsed out. I rinse with cold water, do not shampoo. And then after rinsing, condition it really well and then just blow dry. So when I'm done with these though, I am going to apply them afterwards. Coloring this way is, uh, is something I enjoy doing. Uh, it gives me a little bit more hands-on coloring technique for this. I really get to make sure it's really in there. I get to custom a little bit more. This isn't the only way that you can apply the color. You can actually put them in the person's hair, drop them all in, and then color it that way. I also do that as well. But I do like this technique when I'm doing ombres, especially when I'm using multiple colors. And since we're doing a green and we're doing a pink, I don't want these to bleed together when rinsing them. So it's for this type of color, it's much easier to do it like this, separated. Again, just kind of melting that color down. We don't want any harsh lines of color. The pink is also going to be going on the ombre extensions as well, because I do want that depth that that darker color at the root will show. All right, we'll see how this looks when we're done, and I'll see you guys soon. Now that I finished putting the pink on the hair, this is the most important part. You really want to separate in here. Make sure that all that color is saturated in this hair, making sure you can really add the melting of the color, because this is what's going to make them blend, look very fluid, make the color look great. So now that this is done, we've checked to make sure everything's saturated. We let this sit, rinse it with cool water, dry it, apply it, and then we'll see you guys soon. Hey guys. Here's the finished look. We finished applying the extensions in after we rinsed it out. And here's what we've got. We have the dark green to blend it out to the ombre underneath, to the pink as well. The look she was going for was a very floral kind of look. So we did the green underneath with the pink on top. So this is her finished look. Hope you guys enjoyed. And hopefully you guys find these tips that we gave you really helpful and we hope to see you soon.